Well, it's come to be that time of year. First week of November. Fall is officially here and has been here for over a month. So, unfortunately, that's about time to uh, start putting the cars away. I figured since this is probably our last 60 degree day, it would be a good time to wash the Packard up, do a little walk around video, and a brief history of the car. This video is titled Scott's 1938 Pack of 12 Gentlemen's Coupe, the last one that is known to exist. Because in fact, according to my documentation, it is the last one that is known to exist. There used to be two of them. Eight of these cars were made. This is actually car number eight of eight. And it is the last one known to survive brought some of my documentation out that's in the car right now so we'll get to that here in a second so here's my folder of uh, all the documentation that I have as you can see it is very thick that is everything that's every receipt uh, the previous ownership where it was purchased all that good stuff and right here is just uh, one of the colored brochures. This is a original brochure. That is the stock photo of the car when you would inquire about it. Here's the envelope that the papers came in. It says Packard Motor Car Company of New York. That's where this car was purchased February 3rd, 1938. Come over here and I'll show you the body tag. This is car number eight, like I said. I don't know if it's going to pick it up. I got this gimbal thing on and see if we can go under. 1138200, number eight. Fud Pucker Motor Company. That's who delivered it. City of New York, March 18th, 1938. So this little card here is uh, very interesting. So if you watched one of my other videos of uh, the old VHS footage of this car and the only other one known to exist back in 1985, well, that's this car right here. It is, uh, of course, the factory stock photo, but this one here is uh, Bud Walkers. That's who this card is from. So if you open it up, it has a brief description of the history of his car. So I can just hold it there for a bit if you want to pause it and read it. There, that's a little bit better. But on the bottom, uh, just kind of proves everything I've told you. His was also a model 1607-1138, same as this one. Total production of this model were eight. Only one other known to exist and is also in the greater Pittsburgh area, which is this car right here, the one that I have. Wheelbase, you know, the weight, horsepower... And then it's signed, you know, enjoyed being with you on the caravan, Bud Walker Jr., 1988. So Bud and my grandfather were uh, pretty good friends. But that's that right there. Oh, we'll get into this here. So if you're thinking of doing a concourse restoration or something, the whole, I mean, in this day and age, it's uh, super super expensive but even back in the 70s when my grandfather did this let's see if i can flip through some of these i mean you can just see all the prices and then we get down to like a total um seventy two hundred dollars seven one seventy eight i mean the amount of money that he spent on this car to bring it back to you know a concourse restoration uh, it's just incredible. Here's one. I have another one that is the paint and the bodywork. Oh, right here. $43,409. And this was done in 1994. As you 
can see 1200 hours in body total parts over 8,000 2,000 in paint you know tax $2,400 one of these days I'll go through I have gone through this folder once and it's pretty neat to read the letters back and forth from my uh, grandfather and Bob Turnquist who uh, restored the car there he is Robert E. Turnquist so but it's pretty neat it's just a little fun history I wanted to share about this car I get a lot of people when I go to car shows that think I'm blowing smoke up their butt uh, a lot of people don't believe that there's only one of these that exists that's known and a 36 year old owns it but like I said before uh, my grandfather bought this car at an auction Back in the 1970s, when no one wanted a 20 foot long car that got like six miles a gallon, that might have got a little bit better gas mileage. Pretty much all of my grandfather's pre war Packards he bought in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. You know, back then they were just another old car. There wasn't anything really collectible about them. Do one more walk around here. I'm not very good at this whole narrating video stuff. I don't do these videos to make money or get millions of views. It's just fun to share the history of these old cars. And the only place you're ever going to see another one is on my channel or if you come and meet me in person. I also like to put these videos out because I'm hoping that someday someone's going to watch it. And they're going to say, hey, you don't have the only car. I have the other one. I have Bud Walkers. That would be uh, really cool. That's something that I'm hoping someone brings forward someday. But I uh, don't know where that car is at. Uh, I've heard that it's in a garage. I've heard it was street rotted. I heard it was shipped to Europe, which uh, that's, that's pretty common. A lot of these... Uh, classic American cars went over to Europe for collectors so. and that's all I have for today thanks for watching